bolts within a bolt, boltception. It's Saturday. Vince and I are doing 4,000 hour inspection today. Doing a detailed inspection. There's a lot on this work order today. Um, inspecting the doors, the landing gear, windows, front pressure bulkhead, rear pressure bulkhead, wing inspection, flap inspection, horizontal stabilizer inspection. Yeah, corrosion. Two year, one, one year old plane? Main purpose of this inspection is to look for corrosion in any areas that we don't normally access. This plane was built in August of 2014. Two years. So yeah, it's 4,000 hours in two years. We're flying these a lot. And let's drink, have a good time now. Have a good In order to do a proper inspection, first step is to clean. All right, got the door all cleaned up. I just have to do a detailed inspection. Forward pressure bulkhead. I opened the top up and I'm gonna stick a borescope down there and just look for corrosion. So this is what I'm looking at uh, through the borescope. That's RTV. It's basically a black silicone rubber. The purpose of it is to prevent any uh, gaps between the seams that water or moisture can seep through and cause corrosion. So what I'll be doing is I'm gonna be looking around each rivet and um, making sure there aren't any cracks and other rivets are deformed. Got another plane swap. Plane swap. P -p -p plane swap. Hi, the toy. This is James with Surfair. Um, I got a plane to move down. It's swapping with another plane that's landing in about 10 minutes. Okay, I'll be there shortly. Thank you. I know you guys can't smell anything, but man, when these carpets get wet, they just smell awful. Oh. First thing I usually do when I get in is to set the parking brake. Here's a little T-handle. Pull the T-handle, twist it clockwise 90 degrees, and then pump the brakes until they get firm. We, we all follow a checklist. It's, um, it's a pilot's checklist, but it still mostly applies to us. Landing gear lever down. This is the landing gear lever, it's down. Parking brake is set. Battery one and two is on. There it goes. James is filling in for the maintenance controller maintenance today. Maintenance control is James. Okay, well, if you could, yeah, call me back if you, if you still have it after the engine's running. That's kind of cool. Sweet. Now we're ready to start. the linkage for the door when the door is unlocked these indicators show red that's what the pilots know that it's not locked and then when it locks they switch to green hey we, we just learned that the uh, the guy who cleans the floors here is a movie star <laughs> like a famous movie star yeah he's a model he's a model oh, yeah those are all my old modeling photos <laughs> so since we can't alter the speed of this cart we're trying to figure out how to alter the aerodynamics of it you know take these bolts off and remove this top maybe lower it a little yeah I see this th this whole thing doesn't need to be here I mean it is nice though to have you know maybe keep oh, the cup holders see how these uh the tail rotors mm -hmm. are unevenly spaced. Oh yeah, well look at that. It's to help reduce the noise it makes. Yeah, I had a helicopter mechanic teach me that. <laughs> you know, the extra. Hey Cam. I haven't even had a chance for my breakfast. Oh no, her breakfast. Oh my god. <laughs> I know, you are. Oh my god. Okay, fine, I'm about to model. Right. I did it now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Stop. What's up Steve, how you doing? <laughs> You guys work on Saturdays too? Oh, yeah. Man, all yeah. the time. So while I was doing the inspection of the vertical and horizontal stabilizer attach points, 
I found corrosion on the pitch trim actuator. So we're gonna have to change that out. We've got one in stock. I've never changed it before, but I imagine it's a bit difficult since it's attached somewhere down in there. In the maintenance manual, it says if there's any corrosion to contact Pilatus. Hey! So where do they want it? Right here? Yeah, dude. Need to install wood support right in, right in here. So here you can see the uh, the attachment bolt for the pitch trim actuator. So we'll reach in and loosen that bolt. When we disconnect it, it's going to want to fall back. So he's working on that right now. Wood block manufacturer supply. And I'm going to start uh, disconnecting this. I'll wait to pull the bolt out until Vince is ready. So that first bolt I removed, is a, it's a fail-safe bolt. It actually carries through. There's a hollow bolt with this bolt through it. If you can see what I mean, there's still a bolt holding this on that I'll have to remove. And, and, uh, and this bolt was inside of that bolt. If you guys can see that, but there it is. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. I'm going to kind of wiggle this, see if that helps you. Nope, does not help. Uh, let me get a, you have a wrench that fits right here. You know what? Come on your side. It's stable, it's not gonna pop out. It's all the way in right now. How did you get it that far? There you go. Is it resting on the wood yet? Yeah. All right, that was exciting. There's, there's that disconnected. Alright, should be free. So here's the removed actuator. And you can see under the surface finish that there's a bit of corrosion. That white stuff there, that's corrosion. And since this is a critical component, there's not allowed to be any corrosion on it. It's interesting <clears throat> because on the new actuator, you can see that they went ahead and they painted this area. Get the new one installed, ops check, functional test. So uh, the manual t calls out for a torque value on these nuts, torque plus the rundown torque. And what rundown torque is, is um, for self-locking nuts, basically what it is, it's, uh, it's an oval-shaped nut. And, um, so it expands uh, when you tighten it on the bolt and it automatically locks it in without having to use a cotter pin or a safety wire. But what rundown torque is, is when you tighten it, right? You, you can hand tighten it a certain uh, up to a certain point to make sure it's not cross-threaded. Then you get a beam torque wrench or a deflector torque wrench, and um, you're gonna see it slowly. You're gonna see the needle move a little bit. That's rundown torque, and it's important to grease it before you measure the rundown torque because uh, wet, uh, wet and dry threads have different torque values. This way, yeah. If it calls for 20 inch pounds wet torque and you torque it dry. It's not as tight. It's not as tight yeah. as if you had the, the wet torque. Exactly, so yeah. it's very, very important. Get ready to install the new actuator. All the way forward, hold on a sec. Continue. Tell me whether to pull this it up. This would suck on your own, dude. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> teamwork makes the dream work. Alright. Yeah, guys, teamwork makes the dream work. You know what? I think that's what these like things are for, like so you can stand on it and, <laughs> and like, reach. Here you go. Go. Down. Down. Sweet. In. That ain't, that ain't going nowhere. <laughs> all right, go ahead and do your paperwork. I'm gonna put some CPC okay. on, on all this. So we just 
finished installing the uh, pitch trim actuator and I performed the functional test on it, moved it to a certain position, took a measurement on the actuator. Well, I, I put an inclinometer on top, I moved it all the way up, moved it all the way down, checked the angle, and then that's basically it. By the way, shout out to Mr. James Vincent for suggesting this tool. It's pretty awesome. It solves my uh, dropping the valve cap in, in here problem. Just stick it right in there, take it right out. It's advertised as a, uh, a tool used for um, taking out uh, valve caps on dual rim tires. Yeah, yeah, like dual, like truck tires. Yeah, for, for like truck tires. And uh, it works, it works for what I'm doing and solves all my problems. Thanks, Jim, James, Vincent. <laughs>